Hello fellow nerds, The Beard here, and I just want to mention a couple of things before the game start. If you're Swedish and like StarCraft 2 commentary, in Swedish, check my uh, co-caster out today. His uh, stuff is below. I'm sorry to say that you won't see my pretty face at DreamHack uh, summer this year. I will be at Metal Town, yeah baby. If you're going to Metal Town, post some comment or send me something so I know to uh, go shake some, some hands with you guys. I will try to release uh, a VOD uh, about one every week and I will try to switch around co-casters. So that's uh, pretty much it. Hope you will like the game here. We were a bit, bit shaky both of us but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Hello guys and welcome to the Beard TV's first VOD. Uh, this, uh, this night I am uh, casting together with a, another Swedish caster which name is Ominous. Hello. Hello. Uh, we are looking at a very special game here tonight. I'm just going to introduce it real quick before we go more into Ominous here. We got Naugring facing Seapox. Look at this. Look at this race, Ominous. Yeah, I noticed Seapox has chosen the race Protoss for this game. He usually plays Zerg as well. Yes, absolutely. And Protoss is Seapox, uh, like... Uh, original race, right? That's true. Uh, when he played Brood War, he played Protoss. Also in the beginning of the beta stages for StarCraft 2, he also played Protoss. So he's well familiar with the race. But these days he plays Zerg. I guess he chose Protoss to get away from that more tedious Zerg versus Zerg action. Yeah, exactly, because that, be, that can be a bit, a bit boring, to be honest. But... Uh... We've seen some changes to the the matchup lately, but uh, not not really that much. The changes in the the Roach supply, also the Roach armor, has made it a bit more dynamic overall, but much struggling baning action overall. Yes, yes, indeed. So uh, before the the action commits, I just want to say that that Naugrim put it put his uh, spawning pool down at twelve. Uh, I must thank you for for uh, when I met you uh, in real life, so to speak, in Stockholm the other week when uh, the Play DH tournament went down. It was really really nice uh, talking to you there. Yeah, I agree. I had a great time down there. Meet some people. Meet the famous the beard. Was easy to spot <laughs> Not from far so away. Famous. <laughs> Yeah, and, so, uh, and you actually managed to knock out Naniva in that tournament. How was that? Yeah, it was a great tournament. Uh, my Protoss versus Protoss is by far my best matchup. I checked with my, I checked with a tool who, who counts the, the win-loss ratio for each matchup, and my Protoss versus Protoss was 80% overall. So that's really nice. Matchup. That's really impressive, man. Yeah, congrats to that win, for sure. Thanks. If we... Check a bit more on, on this um, match. We see that Spux has made his gateway end pylon down its ramp, getting more and more standard this day to block off your ramp with your first buildings to get an early expansion. Yes, and now we're now able to sneak in with his uh, Surglings. Let's see if he can make some, some economical damage to Seapox here. I doubt it, but I've, I've seen uh, Naugrim play before and he's a really, really nice player. Not able to kill anything so far. Only one probe goes down for Fox at this moment. Yes. And uh, I'm a bit surprised that uh, Seapox haven't uh, placed down his, his uh, natural expansion yet. Because, uh, in my opinion, it goes down around 20, 25 summer supply. Yeah, the problem is that... Because Nogrim made such an early spawning pool around 12 supply, he can apply much pressure, so Spux has been forced to make a lot more sellers than he maybe initially wanted to. Yeah, that's true, and now we see Nogrim retreating. Uh, yeah, that's probably what Seapok just did, uh, just delay that uh, Nexus for, for a bit, so he could, uh, without any problem, withstand the, the pressure from, from Nogrim. And Nogrim... Um, yeah. uh, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Shoot, man. <laughs> uh, just know, just know that uh, Spux lost the pylon and got supply block. And on Inagra's uh, base, we see that he has 
not too many drones just started his drone production. So the early surgeons had an impact on his early economics. Just now he, he started to catch up in the drone count. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And uh, we also see the, the first gas now of Seapox coming up. It's, uh, and a attack coming from, from Seapox now trying to to uh, fight that, that ramp. I think that's a really smart choice against that army. Definitely a nice time push from, from Spex pushing out with four cellots, forcing that uh, spine crawler to cancel, even a fifth cellot meet up with the army. Yeah, and a lot of damage going down for the for the Protoss player here. I, I'm not really sure if that was worth it all. He didn't really take up that much. Let, let's look at the lost tab. Looks like uh, Seapox is down 250 resources at the moment on units lost. Not a big deal. I would say they're, they're, no one's really ahead at this point. What do you say? Uh, he, he did miss microdose a lot of this. Uh, tried to, to use to use them correctly, just hit them and back up, not to get surrounded, but overall not too good work with those sellers. And now we see a counter-attack going on for Nagwin. Yes, uh, I think this will be really, really interesting to see how long he can prolong these probes from mining, but it looks like he... Oh, he goes back at it. Really uh, interesting choice to move back those sellers from Seapox, as he knew that uh, Nagrim's circlings uh, uh, were still in the base. Look at those probes not being able to mine. This is this is really what Nagrin wants, just to have those probes off the line as long as possible. Yeah, and it also gets a, a perfect round on those three cellos, and the cellos go down very fast. Yes, I, I really like Nagrin's ability to to uh, keep these circlings alive that long. Uh, usually, you see players just uh, bounce in there and and get totally totally knocked off, to even even though they got the the circling speed upgrade. Yeah, most definitely. At the same time, we see that Nogrim has gone for his lair, and we will soon see what tech pad he goes for, and Aspire goes down for Nogrim in his base. We will try to get some Euroly scouts and probably harass Spock's probe line a bit more. Yes, have you seen any uh, any Protoss play from Seapox before? I've seen a couple of games. Uh, also, I played him in the early stages of the beta. He played a Protoss versus Zerg in against Naniva. I think uh, you and I co for that game. That's that's very true. Uh, I just realized that you were in that game. Yeah, that that was really interesting. And Seapox actually won over Naniva in those games, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, more Naniva's mistake than Spock's uh, gain, I guess. But Spock yeah, played that's true. really well overall. Yeah. And the Spire now almost completed as we see uh, now we're trying to, to uh, destroy the destructible rocks up to second uh, natural expansion. We also yeah. see a lot of overlords being spread out on the map which is really really good. Really nice to have that uh, map control as Zerg to know exactly what's going down everywhere. One thing to notice in Spock's base is that he just now started his warp gate tech uh, and he's gone for four gateways overall, so a really gateway heavy army, but it will have some problems against this early Muta, Muta harasses since he can't work in units in its base, he has to produce them out of gateways in the usual old fashioned way. Yes, and uh, we also see an observer now coming out, out of the uh, robotics facility. Uh, what do you think, in Colossus or Immortals here? Uh, maybe a few Immortals to start off with, but I'm pretty sure he will make some some Colossus later in the game. Yeah, for sure, and we see the Mutus now harassing the natural expansion of, of Seapox, really making some, some significant damage, taking out a couple of uh, Stalkers and now starting to pick up pick off the, the probes. And a uh, bit delayed cannon here coming up for, for Seapox. He, he's, uh, he's been having this forge here for a while, but, but not really making any air defense, probably due to uh, that late scouting that, that uh, Observer just uh, just now getting out. Yeah, for sure. Also, he he used that forge more as a wall-off and uh, early defenses. But he also didn't let it 
just stand around. He, he upgraded that plus one attack, will, which will help him out against this new Lalisse force. 